Revelation 20 verse 6 Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of the anointed and shall reign with him a thousand years. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. This lesson is going to be entitled Hebrew Israelites, Immortality, and the First Resurrection. Okay, or the First Resurrection and Immortality. However, which way it comes out, it's the same thing. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be getting into, as the title says, we're going to be getting into immortality and uh, eternal life, the first resurrection. Now, this past week, in this video right here, um, as you see on the screen, Cousin, I'm Sorry You Died, that video, a few points came out and, um, you know, I was basically going into the first resurrection, how, you know, those that die on this side that are the two thirds, which from the house of Israel are those um, that are not the elect, the Israelites that perish on, on this side. And when the end of the world comes, you know, when the nuclear missiles get shot off and destroy America, Babylon, the great, all the Israelites that die over here on this side that didn't make it to see the Savior come back. Or when the Savior comes back, that those that he puts to death, you're going to be reborn in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. The elect is going up into the chariots with the Savior, and they're going to live forever. You know, that's the immortality. Now, I was touching on it briefly in this lesson, and it made me want to expound on it a little more. Also, this past weekend, um, me and the brother was out teaching on the, on the streets, and we basically touched on um, part four here. The day of doom will be the end of this time, and also, will you be part of the first resurrection and immortality? We were basically going into it a little bit. So, you know, a few people had some questions about it, you know, and also, too, in this video, a few people expressed interest in hearing more about it. So I figured it'd be a good time to go into the lesson. As you know, many Israelites are waking up and they have questions about, you know, such things. So we're going to get into it briefly a little bit about death. We're going to talk about immortality, eternal life, you know, we can going into that. So fasten your seat belts. We got a lot to cover, you know, quite a few scriptures to read. So let's start here in Revelation 20. <clears throat> and just bear with me I mean you know if you can sit through it because like I said I got a lot of scriptures to go through you know and I, also things I have to bring out so just be patient alright Revelation 20 verse 4 and it says and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them these are the Israelites okay judgment was given unto them the elect of the house of Israel and I'm going to prove that in a second and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the anointed a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. All right, so we're going to start right there. Now here, who was here to sit in these thrones? And I saw thrones the day that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. This is the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, the elect of the house of Israel for the first thousand years and then after that all is real now here you can see Yahweh Shah saying in Matthew 19 28 and Yahweh Shah said unto them who was the them he was talking to the disciples you know the number 12 is significant because the 12 disciples back then but today the 12 tribes of Israel okay as you're gonna go on to see and Yahweh Shah said unto them verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right. That's who the kingdom is for. The gospel of the kingdom. Right. And that's who judgment was given to the twelve tribes of Israel. All right. But in the first thousand years, it's for the elect. Now here in Luke 22 and verse. Let's see what we go to. Um, verse 29. Oh, you know what? Verse 28, he says, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Again, speaking to the disciples. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye, who is the ye? The disciples first, then the Israelites, the twelve tribes, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, 
judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And we can go on to get more proof of actually who this, you know, who it is. Now, again, and I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was given unto them, to the elect of the house of Israel. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High. And which had not received the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the anointed a thousand years. This thousand year period is known, you know, as some people say millennial reign. You know, Christians say millennial reign, but it's just a thousand years in which the Savior is going to rule. The elect is going to rule along with him, right? That's the prize for the elect. You know, you get the, some of us will never even be put to death. And we're going to cover that briefly in the scriptures too. Um, this first thousand years is after the two thirds die, they're gonna be reborn in the kingdom. I'm imagining during this thousand year period, but they're not gonna, you know, the wicked Israelites are not gonna get to go this first trip around. You know, when the Savior comes and saves his elect, the two thirds are gonna be put to death. You know, two thirds meaning, you know, two thirds of the house of Israel, the one third is the elect of the house of Israel, and they're the ones gonna be sitting on the thrones. Judgment was given unto them. Now we go back and it says after we got this well, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh shot. Now many so-called Christians jump up. Well, see, I have a cousin. He got his head chopped off by ISIS. And, uh, he, he, was, he was preaching the gospel. Look, you can preach your so-called gospel, right? If you go and you get yourself beheaded over white Jesus, Caesar Borgia, the Savior ain't dealing with you and he ain't dealing with that. Okay, just because you get your head chopped off for being uh uh being an idiot okay because the savior never came to die for edomites now i say this there are israelites that look like so-called white people okay on the outside because the israelites gonna come looking like all the nations so you you know i'm not gonna try to get all into that and explain that if you spiritual you know that there are people that look like edomites but actually israelites you know the people that look like israelites that are actually edomites okay you you hear the brothers lessons we teaching it is all over the internet Dig in and find out what it's about. I can't explain every little single thing, but I can prove to you that those that were slain for the word of the Most High specifically are Israelites. Okay, so let's look at that because in Romans, Paul explains who. Because when you when you give um when you preaching the word or you being an evangelist or whatever you call yourself a prophet, all those people are Israelites that that was given to only Israel. Now you have Edomites and other nations that claim they preaching the gospel, but they ain't really preaching. The gospel of the kingdom. They preaching the false gospel. So those that get put to death for preaching the false gospel, that's on you. But in the scriptures, it says the Savior and the Most High says, excuse me, adamantly in the scriptures that only Israel is the ones that's doing him service. Now, this is Romans 9, verse 1. I say the truth in the anointed, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish. That myself were cursed from the anointed for my brethren, see, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. And we know that Paul was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. According to the flesh, who are Israelites? It's important that you get this. These people that Paul is talking about, all these things listed after this are only for the Israelites. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption spoken of in Galatians and all those Ephesians. Being adopted back, these are the Israelites scattered all over the earth, which have been called Gentiles. These are the ones that get adopted back to the Most High because they were far off. That's who the middle wall of partition is broken down for. Those that are adopted back because what does it say? Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? What glory of what? The glory of the kingdom. The glory to come. And the covenants. Both covenants. One and the second covenant, the first and the second covenant, and the giving of the law. The law was given to the Israelites and the service of God to be a prophet, to be a preacher, to be an evangelist, to be a, a minister, whatever you want to call yourself. Only the Israelites was given this office and the promises. This is the reason why the brothers on the streets and these devils is going crazy. The whole world is chomping at the bit, trying to disprove, you know, the doctrine of, of, of uh, Yahweh Shai, right? Who the word even calls Jesus Christ that he's teaching through his men and you can't do it because we're the prophets, you know, and I say that humbly, not bragging or boasting, but it's obvious that the spirit is on us, on the most highest men to break down is what the scriptures say. The Lord revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets and the prophets don't come from all people. They only come from the Israelites and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. What are the promises? 
the kingdom of heaven, you know, rulership of the whole earth, the sit on thrones with the Savior. All those promises belong to the Israelites. You see, and even goes as far as that. Who it goes further? Whose are the fathers and of and of as concerning the flesh? Christ came or the anointed who was overall God blessed forever our man so he just told you a whole mouthful you can close the book you know so when you go back to Revelation and it says here and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai you can't even be a witness of Yahweh Shai if you're not an Israelite because the service of God is for who Israelites and for the word of the most high right and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the anointed a thousand years. Now this mark of the beast that is speaking of, the RFID chip, you know, as, as taught by the apostles and elders and brothers of great millstone. This is the mark of the beast. Now you're going to have, again, so-called Christians that deny the mark of the beast, Edomites and what other nations. They may deny the mark of the beast and they might still not be Israelites. So it ain't talking about you because the whole scripture is only talking about the Israelites. Now listen to this. And then it goes on. It says, and they lived and they lived and reigned and reigned with the anointed a thousand years. Right. Those sitting on thrones, they reigned and we can go. Let's see. Um, I'll get that in a second. The reigning part. But let's let's uh talk about this dead. Is that what I want to get? Yeah, and it said, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This dead are the, are, are the wicked Israelites. This the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection, you know. Now the men that have life is the elect, and the wicked two thirds, you know. The wicked two thirds they're gonna be reborn in the kingdom, okay? But this dead, when you see the the term dead, it doesn't always mean dead bodies. Okay, it could also mean spiritually dead, and we'll prove that real quick. Proverbs 21, verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead, you see? And let me go back and um, change what I said, but the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. Also, the nations are going to be in slavery during the first thousand years, but after they serve their punishment, they're going to be let out, and then they're going to also enjoy the kingdom of heaven okay but they still ain't gonna be above the israelites now the edomites gonna be put to death they're the seed of the wicked they're gonna get put to death they're gonna get completely annihilated and there are many videos and lessons on that but i'm not gonna go into that this lesson so you're gonna have wicked israelites being reborn in the kingdom and those spiritually dead you know also are gonna live again after the, the, the thousand years you know after the um the first part of, of eternal life or immortality Okay, it says this is the first resurrection. Now, again, let's prove the dead. Uh, Proverbs 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see? So if you're in the congregation of the dead, you don't have understanding. You don't have life. You don't have breath. You're still dry bones. I'm speaking to the Israelites now. Here, the Savior references it a couple of times. Matthew 8, 22. But Yahweh shall said unto him, follow me. And let the dead bury their dead. Luke 9, 6. Yahweh shall said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of the Most High. Now, obviously, dead bodies can't bury other dead bodies if they're already dead, right? So it's not talking about literal dead bodies, just like in the Valley of Dry Bones, you see? Just like when you go to Revelation. When you go to Revelation, it's talking about the Israelites. 11 revelation 11 and 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt where also our lord was crucified so you know that this is not um literal dead bodies it's talking about the spiritually dead israelites because it goes back to ezekiel 37 the valley of dry bones this is how we know it's america a great place known spiritually as sodom and egypt the Lord shall bring in the Egypt again with ships. And then also, if you look at the place, America, Babylon, the great, where is wickedness of homosexuality spread throughout the whole earth right here in America, Babylon, the great. And it also goes further. Where also our Lord was crucified. Was the Lord crucified in either Sodom or Egypt, literal places? No. So neither what, so spiritual Sodom and Egypt, you know, 
and Rome, where the Lord really was, I mean, uh, literal Sodom, literal Egypt, and literal Rome, can't all be talking about the same place, but spiritually, it's one place, spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt, and also spiritual Rome. Why? Because the Edomites inhabit it. They rule over, this is the revived Roman Empire, okay? There's so many clues and hints in the Bible, but it's spiritual Sodom, Egypt, and spiritual Rome. I don't want to over-explain it. We, we was getting into the dead, all right? So, right there, all right? Now, um, let's go a little further. This will this also prove the rain part because it says, and they lived and reigned with the anointed a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6 Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. The second death, you know, is going to be when the nuclear missiles devour America, Babylon the Great, because this place is the scene of great judgment, you know. The last time this much death was seen on the earth at one time was the flood. That was the first death, the first, the great flood. This time it's going to be a great flood of fire. This is the second death. So those that have part in the first resurrection, they're going to get saved out of that, out of that eternal fire, as it were, you know, quote unquote, uh, um, figurative eternal fire because it's going to burn for a long time. Okay. But ye shall be the priest of the most high and of the anointed and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, Again, you always gonna have so-called Christians. See, it's the believers. It's the believers in Christ. They believe in Jesus. Nope, 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 nope. It's not. No, it had nothing to do with you, and we can prove that. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of the Most High and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now we already proved that only Israelites can be priests of the Most High and of the Savior. But let's let's get a few scriptures here to back it up. Revelation 5 verse 9 And they sung a new song Only Israelites can learn this new song Only the elect And they sung a new song Saying thou worthy to take the book And to open the seals thereof For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us To, uh, to the most high by thy blood Out of every kindred and tongue And people and nation Why? Because Israelites are scattered all over the earth Right? In every people so you're going to have people that don't look like your average Israelite coming out of all these nations, but they're still Israelites through their father's lineage. If you can understand that, if you can't, then hey, the most high ain't dealing with you. Now, if you go to verse 10, it has made us into our God, kings and priests, and we and we shall reign on the earth. See, that's who's reigning the Israelites. Let's go a little further than that. Let's go to Isaiah 61. And we got to read a little bit here. Verse 1 is going to show you who the ministers and the priests of the Most High are going to be. The Spirit of the Lord's power is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. Who are the captives? The Israelites. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and, to, and, and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. See it says all that mourn brother. Not just the Israelites. No no no. If you read further you'll see it. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Didn't it just say to all that mourn. It's the same people. It doesn't mean everybody that mourns. The whole planet. Then you got also them that mourn in Zion. No it's the same people. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance. The day of, of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of the joy of for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they, who Zion, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. As you go on and read a little more, and they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. This is the kingdom is talking about. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Why? Because they're going to be in slavery. Okay? All you nations going to be in slavery. You're going to be feeding our flocks. Building up the kingdom. Because it says they shall build the old waste. Right? Meaning we're going to build up the waste cities. But we're going to have you do it. You know? The project is going to be ours. You know? For us to, to, to uh, get our kingdom built back up But we already know 
We're going to put the nations to work and they're going to do it. Because the scriptures say all those that would not serve shall get no rain. You can look it up and read it. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. You ain't going to be in the field working. You shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Because you're going to be kings and priests sitting on thrones. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. You're going to be over top of all the nations. Ruling over them in the kingdom of heaven. You see? And that's plain and straight to the point now. So going back up here when it says they lived and reigned within known a thousand years. Now you got you can really understand that. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be the priests of the most high and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now it said in Revelation 5 and 10 and we shall reign right. We shall uh, uh, let me go back to it. Revelation 5 and 9. Or it says that we shall reign, rule on the earth or reign on the earth. Revelation 5 and 10. And has made us into our God kings and priests. What do kings sit on? Thrones. What do priests do? The service of the Most High. Who gave the service of the Most High only in the scriptures in Romans 9? Israelites. And we shall reign on the earth. The kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the kingdom that's being preached right now. Let's also get Isaiah 1. To show you who's sitting on the judges on the throne doing the judging. All right, so um, Isaiah one, and we just start at twenty four. It says, "Therefore said the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies, the nations, the Edomites, so called white man, and the two thirds. You are all enemies of the Most High. That's why you're chomping at the bit to try to stop the truth, even niggers." And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. Now the house of Israel is known as precious silver, gold, diamonds, rubies, precious stones to the most high. All the impurities, the dross, the tin, the iron, the lead, you can all get purged out and taken away, you two thirds. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. And thy counselors as at the beginning, afterward, after I get you out of out of harm's way, right? After I make you uh, change your bodies and make you uh, 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 the great city again, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven as a bride prepared for her husband. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. Who are the converts? Brother, I can convert. I can be an Israelite. I'm a spiritual Israelite. No, no, no. The Israelites, the converts are those that were away from Israel. The same as them, them Gentiles that was the Israelites that were scattered all over the earth. Because what did we do? We found out we was the Israelites. We woke up to the truth and we converted back to our Lord. That's what the Savior did. He paved the way for us by dying on the cross. If you can understand that, great. If you can't, still great. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together and they that forsake the lord shall be consumed so that's that second death is going to have power over you that's why i said in revelation 20 you know blessed is he who have part in the first resurrection on whom the second death have no power because all those israelites is being wicked you're going to get consumed over here in babylon the great now we're done with that we're going to go into the next part the next part of this lesson we're getting into now we're going to prove real quick that when people die where do they go you know spirits are eternal you, you know, spirit is uh, complete energy, which is like into fire. When you die, your spirit don't go off to burn for all eternity. You go back to be with the Most High, whether you an Edomite, you know, whether you're Israelite, whatever. We don't know exactly, particularly like you get up there, if you get sent off over here, over there, we don't know. But you go back to the Most High, we know for sure you don't go back. Uh, you don't go down into the earth and burn for all eternity. Okay, that's ridiculous. All right, so let's just... Get into it a little bit here. Second Corinthians five verse one, because this is going later on. It's going to um, explain a lot when dealing with uh, uh, immortality. Second Corinthians five and one. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, right? 
a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens what is this house called it's a it's your um your earth your heavenly body okay this earthly tabernacle is your is your flesh you know this other body that you you have it's an eternal you know eternal body okay it's a heavenly body or, or should i say for lack of a better term all right for in this we groan earnestly earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven and it said this house is not made with hands if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life right live forever now he that wrought us for the he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is the most high who also have given unto us the earnest of the spirit and this us and all that is keep talking about is israelites because when you go to the opening in first corinthians it talks about the saints and the brethren that are at corinth israelites scattered among the corinthians okay the same people that you would call because where's corinth it's in greece these people that you call greeks there's neither jew nor greek it's all they're all israelites it ain't no white greeks you know here it is they're over there doing all kind of uh, abominations and wickedness and put the Israelites in slavery and, and, and did all this wickedness they did to us but then the Lord gonna still save them no you're not the Greeks is talking about they're talking about those Israelites scattered among the Greeks going after Greek ways and the Corinthians is one sect of those <clears throat> now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is the most high who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord so while you in the body you away from the most high you down here on the, on the earth the most high in the heavens right but when you die where do you go you go back to the father we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord see wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of the anointed that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be bad or good knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men and we are made manifest unto the most high and i trust also are made manifest in your consciences so to put it in short it tells you even in the new testament that when you die you go back to the father Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 20 and I want to just read a little bit here um yeah Ecclesiastes 3 and 19 for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts even one thing befalleth them all what is that one thing that is death as the one dieth so dieth the other yeah they have all one breath so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast beast for all his vanity all go into one place now now you can start saying see it says all yeah all human beings go to one place you die right it's going to tell you all go into one place all of the dust and all turn to dust again see it just says you go down on the ground brother no you go a little further it says who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of beast that goeth downward to the earth you see so when men die, they go up. I thought you said hell was down. If men go up, see, when you die, your spirit goes down to hell. You burn with Satan for all eternity. What idiots. You know? And that's a bunch of lies, a bunch of malarkey. I'm going to read it again. Who knows the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? The, the preceding scripture, I already told you that if you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. Right? Ecclesiastes 12. Hmm. And let me see where I got to start at here. Now I'm going to read verse 5 a little bit because there's a point that I want to get out. It says, Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home. What's his long home? That's death. Man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about in the streets. Just to show you that it's talk, speaking on death. Now in verse 7 it says. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. See. When you die your spirit goes up. 
It goes up to the most high. That's where it goes. Now, we're getting into the part now where, you know, I wanted to mention because I said it in this lesson that some people, it will be a gift. I said it in this video right here, it will be like a prize, a gift. Because some people that's alive now, you're never even going to die. Those of us that have awakened to the truth, you know, if we of the elect, you know, there are some of us, let me just put it like this. Those that are of the elect, that are woken up in this time, you're never going to die. When the Savior comes back, he's going to take some people right into the chariots and you're never even going to die. So that means you would have been born, say if you're 50 years old, you were born back 50 years ago. You lived all through your life. Then you saw the end of the world come. The Savior came and took you on into the next life and you never even died. That's neat. That's great. You know, that's something to strive for immortality eternal life you know now this is john 8 and i'm gonna read verse 51 starting at 51 it says verily verily i say unto you if a man keep my saying he shall never see death then said the jews unto him now we know that thou hast a devil abraham is dead and the prophets and thou says if a man keep my saying he shall never taste of death are thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Who you think you are, Jack? You saying people can live and never die? And how shall I answer? If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I have known him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. See? So... He told him right there, you should never taste of death. Now, let's say this. There are people that have passed away in the flesh already that didn't see the end of the world. They're going to come back and live forever. That's what he was speaking of. He's speaking of your spirit, which is going to live eternally because you're going to come back. You're going to live forever. You see? Let's go on. We got more scriptures to bring out. John. And John 21 verse 20 then peter turning about said the disciple whom you shall love following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said lord which is he that betrayed thee peter seeing him said to you shall lord and what shall this man do you how shall unto him if i will that he tarry till i come what is that to thee follow thou me then with this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciple that that disciple should not die Yet how shall I say not unto him he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? You see? So at that time the Savior was dropping little hints, but he, you know, they had his words mixed up. Now, let's go here real quick. This is second Ezra. Chapter 8. Verse 50. And I'm just gonna read uh, something quick from here. Round about verse 50. Uh, yeah, second Ezra 8 and 50 It says, for many great miseries shall be done To them that in the latter time Shall dwell in the world it's Talking about the end times Because they have walked in great pride But understand thou for thyself And seek out the glory for such as be like thee The elect For unto you Unto who? He was talking to Ezra, Ezra was of the elect He said, but understand thou for thyself And seek out the glory for such as be like thee for unto you is paradise opened, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared, plenteousness is made ready, a city is builded, and rest is allowed. Yeah, perfect goodness and wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you, weakness and the moth is hid from you, and the corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. See, brother, I mentioned hell. Yeah, but it's talking about corruption. It's not talking about, you know, and that corruption is what? That's the decay of your body, as we're going to see it in another scripture. Corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past, and the end is show the treasure of immortality. See that? So, the, you know, at that time, Ezra was being, it was being revealed unto him, you know, that eternal life is there. As you heard it, you know, paradise called in this scripture, eternal life, immortality. Let's go to 2nd Ezra's. Um, 7 and 42 
I'm just going to jump in here. You can go back and read these scriptures in their entirety, you know, do your studying. Because one brother asked me about um, studying, and I just basically said on the, on, the, um, or on the comment board, I just basically said to him, look, all these lessons on this on this page, Street Teacher SEO 4 and numerous other lessons and shows brothers have done, there are thousands on this page. You can go back, watch the videos, take notes, and go back and do your own studying, you know. And the Most High reveal more things to you, the Holy Spirit, you know. Now, Second Ezra 7 and 42, he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. You see that? This present life is not the end. After we, you know, go through this time of Jacob's trouble and the Savior come back, whether we live or die, if you're in the truth, you're going to come back and live. However, the point is that, you know, I've been bringing out right here lately is I don't, I don't want to die. I want to go right on from this life right into the next life, you know, and live forever. He answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past. Right, corruption is fled in the hell to be forgotten. You see? So it says plainly, the day of doom shall be the end of this time, the end of the world. You know, read it Matthew 24 verse 3. Tell us what should be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come. Where corruption is past, intemperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. This is why we keep. You know, the last couple of weeks, me and the brother been going into this, and I've been constantly saying, you can't stop Esau from being destroyed. You can't stop the elect from receiving the truth. No matter what kind of dirty tricks you come up with, what whatever people you pay off, you know, got this nigga Geno Jennings going crazy trying to save the Edomites in his church, not breaking nothing down, not explaining anything, just basically a rant, another so-called Christian rant, big phony, you know. All these people popping up trying to save these Edomites. Look, look over here on this comment board here. Caucasians are realizing they are Edomites. Oh my goodness. You got niggas coming out of the woodwork trying to save these devils. And Christians on the comment board trying to plead and beg and doing all this. Trying to bring out scriptures and just getting emotional. All messed up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed. Nor to oppress him that has gotten the victory. You're so called Negroes. You're Africans. You're not Israelites. You're coming on the comment board. Calling us all these different names But can't defeat us in the scriptures though The kingdom is for us You can't get part of it Let's go on Now this is going to reveal something to you This is 2nd Ezra chapter 6 We're going to start at verse 7 And this, the subject is the end of the world at first It says Then answered I and said What shall be the parting asunder of the times Ezra asked the same question What shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world He asked the most high what should be the parting of the son of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. What does that mean? That means that in the end of the world, Esau is in rulership. You people coming on the comment board turning purple and blue talking about the white man is the Arabs. I mean, uh, the white man is Japheth and, and the white man is the uh, white Gentiles. What the hell y'all talking about, man? And that the, e the Arabs are the Edomites. Do the Arabs rule the world? Are they in charge of the revised Roman Empire or the Roman Empire? No, they're not. The Edomites are. They rule the whole earth. So you mean to tell me the Arabs are the Edomites? The scripture said the Edomites would be ruling the world, but the, Ar the Arabs are the Edomites. But the so-called white people, they rule over the Arabs in their own damn kingdom. It don't make sense, man. The so-called white man is Esau. And they know it. That's why you see vi views on this video. I just put that video up Friday, four days ago, 10,000 views. Why do you think that's so? Because I'm an immaculate, great teacher? No. That's not the reason why. It's because you fucking devils are scared, man. You trembling in your boots and the word of the Lord got your attention and the whole earth knows about it. It's all over the place. Okay, the spirit of the Lord and got on his men to teach the word and it's bringing in the masses. That's what it is. 
2 Edges 6 and 9 For Esau is the end of the world And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows Now as you go down in the scripture It's going to reveal more things to you Now people will watch this video And see that cut and still uh, East Saudi Arabia <laughs> You people are idiots 2 Edges 6 And verse 25 You know when I got to start up a bit Uh I'm going to start at verse 23. You go back and read the chapter yourself. 2 Ezra 6 and 23. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. And see my salvation and the end of your world, which Esau is the end of that. He's in rulership at the end of your world. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. Right. You see that? It's going to be men that never even died. And the men that are received, the elect, shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. How is that? Go what's, what's that talking about? You know, when you go to Hebrews 8 and verse 8 on down, because we already read that both of the covenants was only for Israel. It speaks of the new covenant in which your heart is going to be changed to a heart of flesh. And the laws are going to be put into your inward parts. That's your heart will be changed to another meaning. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. See that? Corruption again. It's been mentioned three times. Corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which has been which hath been so long without fruit shall be declared. You see? So it's going is a right now we believe that the elect, the men of the Lord, the Israelites, and, and, and also the rest of the one third, you are alive on the earth, and we pray and wait for the Savior to return so that we never even tasted death. Now, how is that going to be accomplished? This breaks it down even further. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And we, it's corruption again. It's going, you know, corruption is when your body decays. Incorruption is when you have a... Um, a body that cannot decay and it's going it's going to break it down see flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom you're not going to be having sex in the kingdom yeah we know we know what you're saying but you're 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 wrong on that okay the scriptures say a little one shall become a thousand how can a one little one become a thousand he's going to multiply how's he going to do that he's going to grow up and he's going to find a wife and they're going to get down and they're going to have a bunch of children in the kingdom of heaven because you're going to get a a, a new body we already read about it in, in corinthians you know, you have an earthly body, but when you go up into the chariots, as it's going to be explained as we read it, whoever saved to go up into the chariots, you're going to be changed. You know, this this uh, weakened flesh, you're going to be a, a, a new creation. If you want to say, let me let me try to explain it better. You're going to be a new um, a new version of yourself. You're going to be an all new um, spiritual body, spiritual power, Israelite. You know, you're going to get out the spiritual power. You're going to get full use of your, your mind. You're going to have all your mental capabilities. You're going to be completely righteous. You're going to have a new heart of flesh. You're not even going to be capable of, to sin nor susceptible to any sicknesses. Okay? You're going to be like supermen and superwomen and super kids. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Didn't the Savior say there'll be some of you here that should never taste of death? But we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now this is this dead is talking about the literal dead that died in the Lord. They're going to be raised incorruptible. Meaning what? They're going to get new bodies too. You see, their spirit going to go back into a new um body that can live in the heavens or, or go up into the heavens that can come down to earth and they can then they can eat food they can have sex they can you know do all the things that human beings can do but they're gonna be like 
Like when you watch the movie Superman, like Superman times a thousand, you know, knowing all things, basically. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. You're going to get a new body. You're going to live forever. You're going to go up to the heavens. You're going to come down to earth. You're going to reign on the earth, right? You're going to be able to go to other planets and do all these neat, groovy, great things that people can't do now that they want to do. They can't. All the things that the Edomites want to do that they, they've been trying to, you know, understand and learn, we're going to know it. We're going to be able to do all things, you know, with our minds. We're going to have full capability, like I said, of our brain power. We're going to get all of our brain power, 100 percent. Everything going to be unlocked into us. And the Savior going to be right there. You'll be able to ask him questions and confer with him. And, you know, hey, it's going to be great. I'm talking about the elect now. All right. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You see? So you do have hope, you Israelites out there. You can live forever. And we striving. You know, that's why brothers, hey, we, we passionate about this truth because we pray that we are of that number. Now this is 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4. In 13 but I would have you not uh, I would not have you to be ignorant brethren brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope that's why I was going into it you know about my cousin or whatever that passed away you know that he ain't gonna be a part of the first resurrection you know but then again hey that's just to my limited understanding who knows maybe the most high said you know you know what he he made a new something that you know he didn't tell me it's possible he may be there, you know, but I don't think so. I think he's going to be reborn in the kingdom through the loins of the elect. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And those that are asleep, that's of the elect, let's, let's name some of them, you know, all the 12 apostles, all the great prophets, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all the men of the Lord that died before us, they're going to be there. Abraham, right? When you read in the parable, it talks about Abraham's bosom. The Savior said, you shall sit um, sit down in my table in my kingdom. You, you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you yourselves thrust out. He was speaking to some um, wicked Israelites. So, you know, just try to imagine, you know, John the Revelator, all the great men of the Lord are going to be there, and women. But I would, have, well, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh will the Most High bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, see, those that never died. And also, let me also mention those that, um, of the great elders that passed away too you know Abba Bivens and all the great men of the Lord that, that um taught our elders those men that passed away they gonna come back you know they gonna be with the Savior in the first wave of chariots when they come back that's why we tell brothers even if you get put to death on this side hey you're assured a place in the salvation you're gonna be with the Savior in the chariots when they come back for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead and the anointed shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, I hope you were edified by the lesson. That's pretty much it. You're going to get a new spiritual body that's not susceptible to the sickness or decay or even sin. Obesity, you know, migraine, headaches, cancer, all those things will be a thing of the past. That's what it means in Revelation 20 when it talks about uh, death and hell should be thrown into the lake of fire. So again, I hope you were edified by the lesson. That's going to do it. You know, all praise to the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. We'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing.
Shalom.